Yo, what's going on everyone? This is Austin from Call on Our Shot and today we're back to fantasy football drafts and we're going to talk about several different strategies. Now there's the zero running back strategy, there's the targeting running backs early, there's a waiting for quarterbacks, trying to get the best quarterback on the board, bunch of different strategies out there. But today I'm going to talk through my favorite strategy and kind of give you my thought process when I'm going through the first couple rounds, so as what I'm targeting towards the end of my fantasy football drafts. Now I'm not the first person to come up with this strategy and I am definitely will be not be the last. But it is the wait to draft quarterbacks. This is another element of what I'm looking for when I'm doing my fantasy football drafts. And it's waiting to draft a QB. Now, it's not saying Patrick Mahomes is bad. It's not not at all. I think he's probably either QB1 or QB2 this year, depending on you know what type of leagues you play in, if you value rushing more. Regardless, he's going to be very good in fantasy football. But it's the difference in the depth at the QB position, which is why I heed and tell you guys, Wait to draft a quarterback because there's not there's not a big difference between QB1 versus QB10. That's like a Patrick Mahomes versus Ryan Tannehill. Maybe on the football field, you might think, you know what, Patrick Mahomes is the best guy, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're the best fantasy football quarterback. You can be a good fantasy football quarterback, but not be very good in real life football. So that's why I'm saying wait to draft a quarterback. There's only a couple points difference between QB1 and QB10, whereas there's a big difference between RB1 and RB10. Now, I'd rather attack the areas where there's not as much depth you know, you can pick up a QB towards the later end of the draft. Someone I'm comfortable taking like Justin Herberts or Tom Brady or even Jalen Hurts. I'm comfortable taking those guys because they have a lot of upside and I think they'll be very good fantasy football quarterbacks. Now, a lot of those guys will be at the helm of the majority of my fantasy football teams. So for starters, wait to draft a quarterback. Now, moving on the other positions, I'm always targeting a running back early. Now, you know, if you got one of the first three, four, five, six picks, you're probably going to be drafting a running back. And that's what I think you should be doing. There's guys like, you know, Zeke Elliott, CMC, obviously Christian McCaffrey will go pick one, maybe pick two. Dalvin Cook, those guys should be going up at the top of your drafts. Derrick Henry, all those guys. I don't mind that. But let's say you're towards the back of your draft and you're stuck with, you know, picking like guys like Devontae Adams or maybe a Saquon Barkley or things of that nature. I normally am always going for the running back if I can, maybe like a Jonathan Taylor. And if you're at the end of your draft, I don't mind taking an RB and then a wide receiver. Normally what I'm trying to do is go RB, wide receiver, and then RB again, running back that is. Now, once you're at the top 20 guys in running backs, it's very, it's a, it's a steep drop off. Not as steep of a drop off as the tight end position, which we will talk about in a little bit, but it is a big drop off. And you will see that in the rankings. There's slim pickings down there. Now, it's rare, but there will be a guy out there like a James Robinson who comes out of nowhere, undrafted, becomes a top seven fantasy football running back. That's going to happen, but it's hard to target those guys, and that's why people that get them are really just kind of banking on luck, and they got the right guy. Now, for the first couple rounds, target some running backs. Like I said, there's great depth at the wide receiver position. Just because you don't get Devontae Adams doesn't mean, you know, running like guys like, you know, CeeDee Lamb and Allen Robinson, Mike Evans. Those guys are growing later, but still very good wide receivers. So like I said, I'm going running back, then wide receiver, and then running back if I can. Now, there's guys like a Calvin Ridley or even like a Justin Jefferson, guys going in the rounds two to early third round. These are guys that it's not outside of the realm of possibility that at the end of the year, they are wide receiver one in terms of total points. These guys have that upside and the opportunity to be that good. It's just whether or not they seize that opportunity. Now, one important thing is also to look for value. Now, value, I've talked about it time and time again in a bunch of my other videos, and if you want to go check those out, definitely I will link some at the end of the video. But if a guy is sliding in your drafts, scoop him up. Now, if it's going to load, maybe you do two running backs. That's because a guy like Jonathan Taylor sliding. I don't mind taking that because it's for value's sake. You know, you can be overloaded at one position. You can trade those guys. That's not outside. You can, you can trade them. That's not going to cost you a bunch. You can bolster your other roster positions but take always value if you can. Now, each draft's going to be unique. Your league mate, you know your league, mate, league mates much more than I do. Every person's different. They're going to be wanting to draft their favorite player, and I know you will want to too. So always target value though. Go for the best player available, and worst comes to worst, like you said, you have an embarrassment of riches, and you can just trade one of those guys to one of your league mates. Now, the last position, like we talked about, we'll talk about the tight end position. Now, Everyone would love to have Travis Kelsey, Darren Waller, maybe even George Kittle. I'd love to have them on every single fantasy football team just because of the, how much better they are or fantasy football wise than the guys behind them. But that doesn't mean you have to be wasting that up early pick on one of those guys. Now they do give you a big advantage at that position. So I don't mind targeting them if I can in drafts, but it's another league that, you know, it's, it's all comes up to what you think. You know, if there's a good wide receiver slipping, I'd probably prefer them over that tight end, elite tight end. There's guys, you know, later on in drafts like TJ Hawkinson, even a Logan Thomas that I do think will be very valuable in fantasy football. will still be a top five to six tight end. And you, it depends on what you're looking for in your leagues. And if, you're, or if your bench is deep enough, I don't mind taking a guy like John U. Smith, who we talked about in yesterday's video. He's a guy that I think is going in rounds 12, 13. He could be a very useful tight end. But as I said, 
you want to have if it's only if you have a deep bench. Now I don't want to be drafted multiple tight ends if you're only in like an eight or ten team league. You probably can pick them up on the waiver wire, and you only have like a five person bench. Don't mind doing that. But, you know, if you want to, John o. Smith is also another guy out there that I do think will have a good season and is relatively cheap in terms of ADP, average draft position. Now, another leads to another, another tip towards the end of your leagues. Now you probably have 14, 15, 16 rounds. Make sure a kicker or defense is not within those first, like, 12, 13 rounds. Kicker or defense should always be your last couple picks. You don't want that. There's always, there's always going to be a guy out there that's going to be taking the Justin Tuckers of the world or maybe taking the best defense, the Bucks defense out there. Don't draft a defense that early. It's just not worth it. You Streaming a defense is much better. Personally, that's what I always do. I always stream a defense, pick a team that's going against the worst team in the NFL. Probably will be the Lions that I will be targeting. No, no offense, Lions fan. Now, I'm a Jets fan, so I'll probably target some Jets people going up against the Jets. But streaming a defense against those teams will probably be much better than wasting an, an earlier draft pick on that position. And who knows? You can find a very deep sleeper defense that ends up being very good. A team like the Patriots will probably have a very good defense. Don't know what their ADP is, but like I said, don't draft a kicker or a defense too early in your drafts. Now, once you have a full starting lineup, which is what you really want to see besides that kicker and defense, because you better be waiting to draft them until the end of the league, I normally am looking for high upside guys or people that are handcuffs for the top running back. So what does that mean, handcuffs? Now, that means like Ezekiel Elliott, his backup running back, and we know it, will be Tony Pollard. So if God forbid something happens to Ezekiel Elliott, maybe you have him as your first pick in your draft. You took Ezekiel Elliott, I'd probably start to try to target Tony Pollard, especially if you're in a deeper league. Try to get Tony Pollard onto your team because something happens to Zeke, not only will you lose your first round pick, you need to replace him, and a guy like Tony Pollard, perfect replacement, because this guy's going to be a top 10, top 15 running back each and every week if Zeke Elliott does miss time, which is exactly what you're looking for. Now, you don't necessarily want a guy that's in a committee already. You don't even know what, what's going on. It's the same thing for a player like Dalvin Cook. There's Alexander Madison. We know he's going to go in there. Well, it won't be Dalvin Cook. He definitely won't be as good as him. You probably won't find a better replacement on your team, especially given how deep, you know, how short there really is no depth at the running back position. So always be targeting on the hand, those handcuffs or looking for guys with high upside. A guy like Devontae Smith or Jalen Waddle, rookie, or Henry Ruggs. These guys aren't being drafted necessarily too high. They're all in the wide receiver 40, you know, later in your drafts. But they have the potential to really turn out to be studs in fantasy football. Very similar to what we saw out of Justin Jefferson last year. He was relatively very lowly drafted and absolutely just burst on the scene. Top 10 wide receiver in fantasy football. And that's what you want to look for. Those guys that have that upside. Because more than likely, you're not going to be starting a lot of these guys. The video we talked about yesterday, talked about Corey Davis and Cole Beasley, both wide receiver 48 and wide receiver 50. Don't mind targeting those guys. Those guys will be more of like a high floor, low ceiling kind of guys. But they will have production for your bye week fill-ins, which is something that's that you also would want to be looking out. Make sure you're not drafting people all on the same bye weeks. Now, I hope that gave you some thought process as to what I'm doing in my fantasy football drafts. Now, this is normally for snake drafts. Auction drafts are much different, but auction drafts, one of my favorite leagues, is an auction draft. So maybe if you haven't checked that out, I'll link that video, what is an auction draft. You guys should definitely consider it a look if you're trying to switch up your fantasy football league. To summarize, target running backs early, wait to draft a quarterback, and always try to find value at each position. Also, wait to draft a kicker in defense or else you're, you're really screwing it up. But most importantly, do your research. Be sure to click this video on the screen where I talked about five common drafts mistakes that managers make in their fantasy football drafts. So check out that video. Link a couple more on the channel. We appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. This has been Austin. I'll catch you guys again tomorrow. Peace out.